would you look at that ugly car? What we have here is, I'm pretty sure I named it Heartbeat. I can't remember if it was Heartbeat or Heart Attack. I'll have it in the title so then all this will kind of be useless, but whatever. This Camry here, if you guys don't remember it, I'll give you a crash lesson and reminder of where this car came from and how it got to be like this. So what we have here is like a 1992 or 1993 Toyota Camry. And the reason I remember that is because I actually bought this off a of buddy and this was actually built, this entire car was built in the spring of 2017. And this car here actually got me quite angry. I paid probably the most money I've ever paid for a Toyota Camry, but this thing was super clean and it was one of my very first Toyota Camrys I bought. So I paid quite a bit for it. So that being said, that's one strike against this car. The second strike against this car is, even though I paid a high amount, it didn't come with a catalytic converter or a battery. So again, that was a little bit of a, a shitty deal, but I still took it. I built this to run Impact Motorsports' bone stock in Brooklyn for 2017. And the car was just about built. I have It's all seat belted together. It is fully seat belted together. For Greg's bone stock at Impact Motorsports, you're only allowed a passenger door bar, sorry, a driver's side inside bar, and a post to post. That is it for cage. You're allowed to have your gas tank floating, but I chose not to. So this one is built to about the maximum of Greg's and Impact Motorsports rules. It has a single bar up the front of the windshield, it's got a driver's side bar and a, pa a post to post, and that is it. It has got a simple bumper swap to a Montana van, which are not really known to be that strong, but I did the swap anyway because I thought it was going to be a lot stronger than the factory bumper. Now for Impact Motorsports, you had to keep factory bumper shocks on the front of these early Camrys. Newer Camrys, like 97 to 01, don't come with bumper shocks, but 92 to 96 do. So I have kept the factory bumper shocks, which is going to make this front end a lot weaker. Um... But yeah, basically this car is built to bone stock. Now we have brought it back into the shop since then because about one week before I went to go run it with Greg at Impact Motorsports in Brooklyn, Ontario, the motor blew. Just out of nowhere, it stopped running. Uh, I ended up putting a new timing belt onto it. It would spit and sputter. I thought timing's out. That was not the thing. Turns out I dropped a valve and I had a dead cylinder. I had no compression in one cylinder and uh, it's because the valves dropped. I'm not going to tear this motor down and do a head job on it. What I did was I just threw it in the backyard and I put a tarp over it. Just left it alone for a full year. Didn't even mess with it. It made me so angry that I didn't even want to deal with it. But, after Fall Brawl 2017, which was in October, I had a Toyota Camry that ran great. But the body, the frame, the suspension, everything was garbage. The front bumper was up here. It had come in a foot and was almost resting right against the exhaust manifold. Actually, the rad sat against the header and burnt the car. So, I had a good motor, but I had a crappy body. And out of this car here, I had a great body, but a crappy motor. So I took the motor out of a 2001, which is still a four-cylinder, and I put it in this 93. So this motor right here looks like it's been on fire, but don't let that fool you. It has been on fire. <laughs> um, we have a coil pack car right here. Um, we had, I don't know, this car here was a great car at one point in time, and then the motor was the only thing left out of the car. So I did a heart transplant, and that's how this car got its name. Uh, Project Heartbeat, I'm pretty sure, is the one that this thing got. So we got the motor all switched over, uh, we got it running, and uh, that was basically it. I was so still kind of distraught about this car that I really didn't want to mess with it very much, so I still threw it back in the corner. But with the derby coming up, this thing has to come back into the shop. This derby is about one month away. Now, that seems like a long time, but I'm now working six days a week, ten hour days about an hour and a half away from my house. 
So the time I'm going to have to be able to work on this car is going to be limited. What needs to be done to this car still is clean up the wiring. The wiring is a big issue with this car right now and I need to have it dealt with. I cannot be running with this crappy wiring everywhere that is making me angry. Uh, two, I don't want to put water in the rad because it is still freezing temperatures out. Um, what else do we have to do? We have to put padding around the rad. I haven't really made up a list, but I don't think it'd be a very big one. Um, I'm allowed to put steel behind the struts, so I'm definitely going to be able to do. I'm definitely going to do that because <laughs> I need it. I get axle shotted too much. Um, this was one of the very first cars that we did an EGR delete on, and I think this thing runs great. Um, I don't know what else to say to you about this car. I'll give you a quick walk around. Um, I still do have to paint it, so don't you guys worry. It'll get painted. I got crap from a lot of you YouTube viewers because in the heat of the moment, in the end of the 2017 season, I stopped painting a lot of my cars, and I didn't really film a lot of the stuff I was doing, and you guys told me, Zach, you're rushing. So, I'm going to paint, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to make videos of everything I do to keep you guys happy. But uh, let's take a walk around to this car. So what we have here is just a very, very simple build car. Um, since the motor's gone back in, I did put some threaded rod in there. Just tack welded to the frame all the way down. I am going to put strut blocks behind the struts on this. I'm not 100% sure if they're going to let me run that strut tower. It is a factory bolt-in piece, so I don't really see a big problem with running it. But I am not tech, so if they tell me to remove it, I'll remove it. We have uh, what I used to do with the high lift bar right up the middle. Again, this car was built over a year ago. Coming to the inside, I used my torch just to blow big holes to tie everything closed with seat belts. Um, where this was going to go allowed zero body creasing. So if you can tell, those panels are still straight. So I'm going to reread the rules to see what I'm allowed to do body creasing wise. I'm Even if I can just dish that trunk a little bit. Uh, I am allowed to put threaded rod in the trunk. Oh, look at that. There was a cat or a squirrel that went across here. So we will be putting threaded rod in the trunk because I still think that helps out every car. Um, for cage wise, we just have our post to post and our driver side bar. Nothing really fancy for the cage. Um, I would like to put a gas tank protector on this because I am allowed a gas tank protector. Um, we'll see how it goes time wise, but my main thing right now is clean up this electrical. It's too tight to the door, so if I get hit, I'm a little scared that it's going to break some of that electrical off and, I don't know, just cause me problems. But, I might start this thing up and drive it back outside to try to get some of the snow off of it. I'm not 100% sure yet, because I really don't like water in the shop here, because it always freezes and then I'm slipping on ice. But I'm happy to have this car back into the shop, and... Uh, Hopefully you guys are happy to see this thing being finished off because I am totally happy that this thing is going to be smashed. So thanks for watching guys and uh, a happy welcome to Project Heartbeat back into the shop. See you guys back here tomorrow.